Hello, algebra students. We're taking a look at estimating the value of root expressions today and talking about squares and cubes. Now, hopefully you're familiar with squares and cubes, or at least the beginning of that. So we're going to take a look at just finding the perfect squares of uh, the values from 1 to 12. So 1 squared, the meaning of that is simply 1 times 1, and so that is 1. And 1 cubed would be 1 times 1 times 1, and so that, of course, is also 1. 2 squared, with the meaning of that, would be 2 times 2, and so 2 squared is equal to 4, whereas 2 cubed is 2 times 2 times 2, and that gives you 8. So um, just kind of following that pattern, then 3 squared is 3 times 3, which is 9, And 3 cubed is 3 times 3 times 3, which is 27. 4 squared is 4 times 4, which is 16. And 4 cubed is 4 times 4 times 4, which is 64. So I'd like you to pause the video and fill out the rest of the chart. You may use your calculator to do this. If you're not sure how to use the squared and cubed buttons or the power buttons on your calculator, I'd love for you to ask in class so I can show you on your calculator how to use those power buttons. On the school calculators, you would just type in the number, such as 5, and then for squared, there is usually an x squared button. And that would, do, that would give you the meaning of 5 squared, or 5 times 5, which is 25. To get the cubed, the power of 3, or cubing, um, some of you will have a cubed button. It would just be x to the 3. But some of you will need to use the powers button. So you would hit the number you're trying to take to a power. And the powers button, which either looks like a little mountain carrot, or it can be a x to the Y button. But then you have to tell it what power you're using. And in this case, if we're cubing, we want the power of 3. And so that would give you 5 times 5 times 5, or 5 cubed, which is 125. So again, I'd love for you to pause the video, try that out on your calculator, or multiply it out, and fill out the rest of the chart. Then restart the video to check your values. So I hope you're checking your values and you're successful. If you didn't get the correct values, double check. But if you're still having trouble, please make sure you bring your questions into class. So just like we can square values and cube values, we can unsquare and uncube by using roots. So when you see just the little check mark symbol, that is the square root button or a square root symbol. So we just call that square root. And so that is just like undoing the square. So you're kind of asking yourself if there's a number inside that, what number times, what value times itself would give you the number inside that little house. And the same thing is true of the cube root. It looks the same, except you see the cube there, the three there, telling you what root you're looking for. So I'm looking for what number as a factor three times would equal the value inside that. And this is the cube root. Or sometimes we would say root three. So just kind of looking at taking a square root. Because the square root, or because two squared is four, then the square root of four is two. So you're kind of just undoing squaring. Because 2 to the third, or 2 cubed, is 8, the cube root of 8 is 2. So there we're just undoing, taking to the third power, or undoing cubing. So let's practice a couple of square roots and cube roots. The square root of 144 is asking you what number times itself or as a factor twice, 
gives you 144. And that's 12. Because 12 times 12 is 144. What do you think is the square root of 64? I'd love for you to enter your answer on Edpuzzle. Then the video will continue and you can check your answer. The square root of 64 is asking you what number as a factor twice would give you 64. And that number is 8 because 8 times itself is 64. The cube root of 1,000 is asking you what number as a factor three times would give you 1,000. And that value is 10. What is the cube root of 27? Hopefully you got an answer of 3. If you didn't get that answer, please make sure you're asking questions in class. Every number can be represented by a point on a number line. So we want to place the square root of 144 on a number line. Now, we just looked at the square root of 144. The square root of 144 is equal to 12. And so we should be able to locate its spot on the number line fairly easily. We just need to make a number line. I'm going to start my number line at 10, and then 11, 12. I go a little bit above where I need to go, but I don't have to fill the whole thing in. So the square root of 144 is 12, so that dot falls right on 12. So I'm going to put the square root of 144 right above that, but those are equivalent values, and I plot the dot right on the number line at 12. Irrational numbers are a little bit harder to locate on the number line. If they're not perfect um, squares, then when we take the square root, if we're estimating, if we're not using a calculator, we need to think about where they belong. And even if we are using a calculator, it's always good to think about these things so that you have a number sense and you know that you're typing things in and getting a reasonable answer. Since 15 is not a perfect square, when you take the square root, to estimate it, you want to think about the perfect squares below and above. The perfect square below 15 is 9. So we want to think about the square root of 9. The square root of 9 is 3. The perfect square above 15 is 16. So we want to think about the square root of 16, which is 4. So the square root of 15 is between the square root of 9 or 3 and the square root of 16 and 4. Now, because 15 is closer to 16, it's going to be closer to the number 4. So then we would put on our number line. Let's just get our number line set. Again, 2, 3, 4, 5, just going a little below and a little above where we need. And so the square root of 15 fits between the numbers 3 and 4, but it's closer to 4. So I'm going to estimate my dot right here and put square root of 15 just to label it above the dot. We want to find the approximate location of the square root of 143. Now 143 is not a perfect square, so we want to think about the perfect squares above and below. The perfect square below 143 is 121. The square root of 121 is 11. The perfect square above 143 is 144. And the square root of 144 is 12. So the square root of 143 is in between 11 and 12. And because 143 is really close to 144, it's going to be closer to the number 12. We want to set our number line. And because 143 is really close to 144, so the square root of 143 is going to be really close to 12, I'm going to put my dot right next to the 12 and then label above it. So now we're finding the approximate location of the square root of 5. This 5 is not a perfect square, so we want to think about the perfect squares below and above 5. Perfect square below 5 is 4. So we think about the square root of 4, which is 2. The perfect square above 5 is 9. So we think about the square root of 9, and that's 3. 
because 5 is closer to 4 than it is to 9, then it's going to be closer to the value 2. Get my number line ready, just a few below, a few above. And so the square root of 5 is going to be between 2 and 3, but closer to 2. This time we're looking at it without the prompting blanks. So think about the perfect squares that are below 34 and above 34 and decide where you think that would be located on the number line. I'd love for you to pause the video, make your number line, and then restart the video to check. My thought process was that below 34, the perfect square is 25, so that's 5. Above 34, the perfect square is 36, so that's 6. And so the square root of 34 is between 5 and 6. But because 34 is closer to 36 than it is to 25, it's going to be pretty close to 6. If you weren't unsure of that, again, make sure you're bringing your questions to class or entering them at the end of a puzzle. Now we're going to plot a cube root. The cube root of 8, since 8 is a perfect cube, the cube root of 8 is 2. Again, that's pretty easy to plot on the number line. You just put a dot at 2, and that's the cube root of 8. To find the cube root of 35, we want to think of the perfect cubes below 35 and above 35. 27 is a perfect cube below 35, and the cube root of 27 is 3. 64 is the perfect cube above 35, and the cube root of 64 is 4. So the cube root of 34 is between 3 and 4, but it's closer to and here's where you have to decide. Is 35 closer to 27 or closer to 64? Since 35 is closer to 27 than it is to 64, then the cube root of 35 is going to be closer to the cube root of 27. So it's between 3 and 4, but closer to 3. So I put my dot closer to 3. It's just an estimation and then I'm going to label. Make sure you're bringing your questions into class or jotting them down in Edpuzzle so you don't forget. Have a good evening.